Hey everybody, thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Laura Ingram. This is The Ingram Angle. Fearing your own people. That's the focus of tonight's angle. <laughs> It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress for mainstream outlets notice. Inflammation's origin seems likely less atrocious. Nina Jankowitz, Biden's new disinformation czar over at Homeland Security. She's off key in a really bad uh, Julie uh, Andrews impersonation, but it's off key in more ways than one. If we all didn't know that this was really happening, if you didn't just witness that, would think this was all some kind of Orwellian spoof of what paranoid conservatives think the establishment on the left is planning. Part angry feminist, part frustrated karaoke singer, Jankowitz is the last person who should be trusted with distinguishing between fact and fiction. She's a graduate of Bryn Mawr College, kind of a caricature of the modern left university. She worked at the liberal Wilson Center, a think tank, globalist, of course, it has a collection there of all the worst ideas on foreign policy. And as an expert in Eurasian affairs, you would think that Ms. Jankowitz would have authored articles maybe on the importance of preserving free expression in repressive regimes, right? Well, not quite. But she did publish this gem. Malign creativity, how gender, sex, and lies are weaponized against women online. Oh, can't wait to read that. She even worked as an advisor to the Ukraine foreign minister. What? And most importantly, for the current day, she is a Hunter Biden scandal denier. Is this the same individual who said the dossier was real and the Hunter Biden laptop story was false? Is that the individual who's now running the disinformation governance board? Uh, I'm not familiar with those statements. Been reported widely. I'm not familiar with those I'm not familiar with that. Well, let me enlighten you, Mr. Secretary. What the new disinfo czar really said about Hunter Biden's laptop was that we should view it as a Trump campaign product. She obviously wants us to, like, I don't know, emulate a European style model of heavy regulation of Internet content deemed harmful and dangerous. Of course, that just means content that conflicts with whatever the left believes about issues like climate, elections, race, and gender identity. The First Amendment does not apply to private platforms, and Facebook could very easily decide that climate denial or other, you know, harmful hate speech and misinformation is not allowed on their platform. But they have decided instead uh, to allow this kind of free speech fairy dust to reign over the platform. And I think that's where we need to see regulation come in. You see how she had that laugh, like scuff free speech. <laughs> Now, someone should give her a lesson in basic administrative law, because if it were constitution as a delegation of authority for the executive branch to effectively outlaw certain types of speech it doesn't like or doesn't agree with, I kind of have a feeling that President Obama, who actually is a Harvard Law graduate, would have figured that out before this Biden Bryn Mawr crowd. But the real story here is a lot bigger than Ms. TikTok meets America's Got No Talent. The problem is the Department of Homeland Security itself. Set up by President Bush after 9-11, it's a complete disaster. I've been saying this for probably 15 years. And now it's run by a man I wouldn't hire to work security at a preschool. Have any of the 42 illegal migrants on the terrorist watch list or no-fly list encountered on our southwest border been released into the United States? I do not know the answer to your question. So, look, if you think that DHS exists to protect the homeland, you heard him. You're sorely mistaken. Its entire mission now, this disinformation board, is to protect the elites from the homeland. In other words, to subdue and surveil the people who actually pay their salaries. Now, last time I checked, 221,000 illegal immigrants crossed our southern border. They were encountered by our Border Patrol. This was in the month of March alone. That's a record, I believe. Congratulations, Mr. Secretary. No threat to the homeland there. No worries at all. 
Well, this only fuels our drug epidemic, you know, it puts the cartels in charge, kills tens of thousands of Americans every year in fentanyl overdoses. But the only thing that DHS is really worried about is you. Because they want to shut down conservative speech, ban anything negative said about Biden or the Democrats, and punish you if they think you get out of line. They call that, by the way, domestic terrorism. If you post something that they don't like, believe me, that's what they think. So I'm telling you, someone like Rand Paul should have the Senate lawyers write a letter to put the administration on notice that Republicans believe the Office of Disinformation has been set up to harass and intimidate law-abiding Americans who are simply peacefully exercising their constitutional rights. That they believe that it's being headed by a rank ideologue and a gender activist. And that the Republicans also should announce that if any American feels threatened or in any way targeted by the DHS, Republicans will fight tooth and nail to defend their rights. Remember now, the government used 9-11 to justify the creation of DHS, which just turns into this huge surveillance op apparatus in the United States. The government then used COVID to lock us down, mandate vaccines, and close schools and even churches. And now many of these same people are using January 6 in a similarly nefarious way as a way to limit freedom. Attend a conservative event, a Trump rally, you better watch out. Even post about it or maybe some criticism of the Biden administration. Maybe you're really angry about the Biden administration on the Internet. Doing so could end you up on some type of watch list. Maybe you'll lose your job. Maybe you'll even be put in jail. Now, the more this goes on, the more obvious it is that these people do not know how to govern America. Look at the economic news this week. The more desperate Democrats will become to silence the opposition, to punish their domestic enemies. This is why, for instance, they're freaking out about Elon Musk and Twitter. But the Department of Homeland Security, it was an idea whose time has long since expired. It should have been broken up many, many years ago. They could have streamlined intelligence without creating a new super state style control of the American people. It's too big. It's too unwieldy. It wastes too much money and it's too ineffective. And by the way, it's now actually vindictive. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.